Hello, my name is Nathan Wenger, and, and I'm Ritvik Kavua. And we're here in the Barrow BTV room inter interviewing Emmett Langley. Thank you. Please say your name and when you attended or worked at Barrow. My name is Emmett Langley. Um, I attended Barrow 1946 through 54, if I'm not mistaken. Could have been 53. Thank you. Um, we have a couple of questions here. Um, what was a typical school day like at Barrow? A typical school day. Um, well, we would arrive at school, and we generally all came in uh, the same door, which is still there, that wing. We didn't have but two wings, um, sort of in a L shape. And I, now I notice there are a lot more w wings and trailers and mobile units, whatever they are. But uh, a typical day, the teachers would greet us at the door, and we would go in, and probably the first thing we would do would be to... Uh, I have pledged allegiance to the flag. And there may have been um, a prayer back in those days. Uh, someone would lead us in the pledge, and I think probably a prayer. Uh, and then we'd start with just the usual stuff of um, geography, mathematics, uh, history, or social sciences. Um, uh, spelling, and we would have on occasion, maybe once a week, a music teacher that would come to our room, and we would do some kind of music, and we would have art also, and that was, and we'd generally be gone by, uh, seems like quarter to three in the afternoon depending on how old, you know, what grade you're in. But that was a pretty typical day. Did you have PE or physical education? Yeah, we had, uh, back in those days, they called them play periods, and we would go outside and uh, just have the best time running and if you find a rock, people would throw rocks. And usually the boys did not play with the girls. Uh, the girls would be swinging and climbing on the monkey bars. And uh, the guys would be, um, that was where the playground is now, same place. We would play softball. Um, somebody would have a football. Um, just do different things. It helped expend energy for the teacher, I'm sure. Um, but we didn't have an actual PE. We would have students come from the university and sort of experiment on us with different parachute games. And I guess they probably did it as an assignment. And some of them were really good. Uh, I, I mean, some of the activities and some of them were not, not quite as good <laughs> to be diplomatic. But they were probably education students at the university. Uh, but that's, that's generally the... We, we did not have organized physical education. Thank you. What did students do for fun at recess? Well, every now and then we would have um, uh, it, 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 girls would chase the boys <laughs> and the boys would chase the girls. That might have been older grades. Uh, but there were swings, really nice swings, except the seats were made out of like two short two-by-fours. And if they hit you, 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 uh, you knew it. And uh, we had swings. We had this set of, I call them monkey bars, but it was like a jungle gym where you climb up on this thing and swing and uh, drop and whatever. But a lot of time it was just crazy running around. Well, what were the playground equipment generally made of? Was it metal or any other material? Most of it uh, that I remember was made out of, I would say, iron. Not steel, but iron. 
Um, it seems like the swings were made of the same thing. They were made of metal, and they probably were set in concrete to keep them from tipping one way or the other because people really like to go high in the swings. It's probably not much different today than it was back then, but um, that it, we did have balls and bats and a couple of gloves, but most people during ball season would bring their own baseball glove or softball glove. Uh, but uh, most people didn't didn't bring their, I mean, we just played with bare hands. And we would have um, a spot marked off in the red clay for first base, second base, third base. There were no bases. Um, but we'd have several balls and several bats and then we'd collect them at the end and put them back down under where the, it seems like where the uh, custodian had his headquarters, we'd store them in there. But then the next period, I, I don't know, they, I guess they'd go in there and get them out again. But we always had to pick up, uh, keep everything neat, you know, for the next group. Did anybody ever get hurt or injured or something like that on the playground? Yeah, we, we had injuries. We had to have the ambulance come every now and then. And there would be, um, every now and then, two kids would get in a fight. And uh, boy, they'd really duke it out. Two guys, girls. I don't remember the girls ever fighting. But the guys, uh, every now and then, somebody get in a fight with somebody else. Most of it was what we called <laughs> sort of like Little House on the Prairie was not a real fight. It was more like a tussle, what we call tussling, wrestling, you know. What did you enjoy about Barrow School? What was your favorite part? Well, the favorite part were the friendships. You know, uh, I went here from kindergarten through seventh grade. We didn't have junior high school or middle school. You went straight from this school to old Athens High School. And some of those people were twice as big as we were. I mean, they were huge. These were senior football players. And we were seventh grade, uh, eighth graders. But we went kindergarten through seventh grade here and those friendships helped sustain us in high school because they were kids from all over Clark County that we didn't know so our group just sort of hung together and you were glad to have dependable friends but it was fun because in those days everybody rode a bicycle the guys did the girls didn't uh, but you could ride your bicycle to Barra what was your favorite part of Barrow, like the curriculum, the activities? Well, my favorite activity was being a Cub Scout. We used to have uh, Cub Scouts here, and we had a, a pack. You know what a pack is, like a Boy Scout troop. Another part I really liked was uh, we had band, and in the third grade, um, I started playing the trumpet. And I still play the trumpet, and that was a thousand years ago. I, I don't actually play a trumpet, I play a military bugle. But it all started right here in the third grade, in the elementary band. Just out of curiosity, did you have Pinewood Derby races in Cub Scouts? Oh, in Cub Scouts, yeah. We, uh, we, had, we had small homemade cars. And then we had, uh, like, back then it would be called the Soapbox Derby. They were big enough to actually ride in. Nowadays we have smaller cars that we put on tracks and race. And on your way out, if you look in the display case, you'll see them on display. About the size of wheels. Uh, no, a little bigger. About, you know, this long. Yeah, oh my goodness, yeah. And, th and they're homemade and whittled, so yeah, it's kind of neat. Okay. What were your favorite bear traditions? Well, 
I always enjoyed, which was sort of a um, outdoor activity. We used to do a maypole, and that's um, probably a northern European thing where you probably old Celtic, where there's a big pole and there's streamers, and you go around and around and around, and when you finish, it's all knotted down at the bottom. That was a lot of fun. And another tradition we had, um, I guess it was part of music, we would push back the desk or the tables and chairs, and the music teacher, we would do folk dancing. Not exactly square dancing, but very similar. And some of that came from different cultures that we were not familiar with. But it was, uh, that was, that was fun. We really, uh, we didn't do a lot out of the ordinary. It was just go to school. You did get to go outside and play. That was always fun. Now, indoors, because uh, sometimes it would rain, and it rains like it does even now, uh, you couldn't go outside because it was the playground had no concrete except what held the monkey bars and the swings, but it, it'd just be a mud hole. So we stayed inside and tried to do activities inside. But I always enjoyed map activities like geography and social sciences. Did you do the storybook parade or um, Polar Express Day? No. What are your favorite memories or stories about Bear? Well, some of them I can't tell. Um, He'd probably go to jail. Uh, we had some teachers that had been here forever. They had taught people's parents. I mean, that's how long they had been here. And it was, um, it was interesting to hear them compare you to your parents. Um, traditions... We always had fun around Halloween. People dressed up. Um, that was something to look forward to. Scary, uh, spooky costumes. So you dressed up at school? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and at Valentine's, we all had a box. And, and you made a Valentine for everyone in your class. So everybody generally got the same number of Valentines. And that was uh, that was that was fun, uh, and we really didn't have Valentines that you could buy, like at um, Walmart or I mean they weren't pre. I mean you actually sat down and made these Valentines, and some we made at school probably as a certified art project. And you would draw out a heart and take a pair of blunt scissors. They had to be blunt, uh, you know, so you wouldn't draw blood. And uh, cut them out and write something on it. And the girls, good Lord, they would always tear through their box looking for a special valentine from somebody, <laughs> you know. <laughs> it was, <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, but it was always really fun to... Uh, do oh Christmas uh, we uh, we always had something big at Christmas and w one of the best activities I always enjoyed was um, reading and when we had substitute teachers like the teacher was sick you know or out of town or whatever we would have substitute teachers and they would read goofy books like Uncle Wiggly have you ever heard of Uncle Wiggly? Oh, have you really? Okay, well, we would read Uncle Wiggly and Disney books that actually had Mickey Mouse and uh, Donald Duck. Uh, and that was always fun because most of our teachers could really read with expression. And that was, that was it was different in that we didn't do it often, but that it was, uh, uh, it was really fun. Was that about the two teachers who had been there forever? 
<laughs> oh, well, one of them was the great Rebecca Fowler. She had been teaching for many years, and she had uh, taught, uh, it, it, best I remember, she had taught people's parents. Uh, uh, well, parents, yes, but older siblings had taught older brothers. Like Miss Rebecca had taught my brother four years before me. And every now and then she would say, his name was Robert, Bobby, and she'd say, like, well, Bobby wouldn't do that. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was probably a form of discipline. You know, like, you better stay in line because your brother wouldn't do that. Yeah. So. She was just kind of weird? No, she wasn't weird. She was wonderful. Yeah. She was wonderful. Uh, she was also my across-the-street neighbor. One interesting thing I've noticed, like with my own children, Athens back then was so small. You knew your teachers because you would see them uptown at old Michael Brothers department store. We didn't have malls. We didn't have a mall at all. Everything was right down on Clayton Street. That was uh, like Woolworth's 5 and 10, 5 and Dime store and Michael Brothers. And, uh, so you'd see people, particularly on Saturdays, um, Everywhere you'd see your teachers at basketball games and football games at UGA, and it was uh, they had to be careful because there were kids everywhere. They didn't want to ruin their reputation. <laughs> didn't want to ruin their reputation, and you didn't want to ruin your reputation either. So, uh, and back in those days, uh, you could ride your bicycle anywhere, just all day long. And it was easy because if you go up to Millage, you can ride all the way to Prince Avenue and never have a hill. It's just flat. You ride right along this ridge and you get down to Prince Avenue and take a right. And all of a sudden you're in the middle of town and you have not expended 15 calories. And you can stay all day goofing around downtown and then ride home. Now, if you go down Lumpkin, it's a different story with the hills. But Millage was really just right at the top of a little... Millage Terrace? Millage Heights? Millage Avenue. Millage Avenue. Yeah, all the way down from Five Points to Prince Avenue. There's no hill at all. And even as a third grader with a one-speed bicycle, you could just fly down through there on the sidewalk and just be downtown in 10 minutes. We also had buses, and I think it was 15 cents, but you could ride downtown for 15 cents. Yeah, because my, my allowance for my barra days was not but a dime a week. So um, I had to ride my bicycle everywhere. What historical events happened when you were at Barrow? I guess the biggest thing that I remember was the war. Not World War II, because World War II was over when I started Barrow, but not long after World War II came the Korean War. And there were people whose uh, fathers and uncles were called back in the army um, and Marine Corps to go to Korea and that that's one of the things I remember very disruptive similar to today they they had served and they got out and then lo and behold that was Korea uh, which is sort of a forgotten war but it was a big deal and they got recalled and uh, that was that's one thing I remember. Plus, at that time, and it still may be that way, married housing was was in the barrel limits. So we had a lot of foreign students whose parents or father or mother were in the graduate school. 
and they would come and stay a few years and they would leave. But it was a good experience because we had all kind of cultures represented. We, we had Indians, we had uh, Chinese, we didn't, I don't remember any Japanese because they were devastated from the World War II. Um, and there was still animosity toward the Japanese. But uh, we had, um, anyway, a number of cultures. And that was, that was fun. Do you have any air raids or air raid practices? You know, we, we, I, I only remember, uh, and I guess they were probably fire drills. Uh, I don't recall ever having the old duck and cover in case of a nuclear explosion uh, where you get under your desk and cover your heads. I really don't remember those. Looking back, you think, well, that's probably ridiculous anyway. I mean, you know, yeah, it's a <laughs> case of a, back then, all we had was an atomic bomb, but it would do a, you know, it'd do some damage. Um, that was even before the hydrogen bomb. But I don't recall ever doing duck and cover. Now, one thing we did, they may have come here once or twice, was getting shots like uh, uh, in inoculations, the health department. And uh, we had typhoid shots, and we eventually wound up getting uh, polio shots and sugar cubes that you would take uh, to prevent polio. That was always a scourge in the 50s. The fear, particularly in the summertime, of getting polio and being paralyzed. People had polio back then? Yeah, polio? before it was eradicated. Even the president of the United States had polio and was on a wheelchair. And that was? Roosevelt. Roosevelt. Yeah, very few pictures of Roosevelt with his braces. He had braces, and he also was on a wheelchair. Was he um, elected president while you were in school? Yes. Yeah, well, right before, right before I started. Harry Truman was the president when I started here. But Roosevelt had only been dead a few months, I guess, when we, when, uh, we started here. Was there any events that happened around that, like mock elections that you can remember? I don't, I don't think so. We didn't do any much politics. We studied like the three branches of government, but we didn't participate. Uh, now in Cub Scouts, we did like civics and things, you know, uh, going out knocking on doors and, you know, encouraging people to vote, that kind of thing. How has your time at Barrow influenced you during the course of your life? Well, it was just a good foundation to build on. Um, a lot of good values that you don't realize until you're gone, uh, like honesty. Don't steal. Don't even take, don't even borrow unless you ask permission. Uh, it, it just was, was really good. And then I, I went into Boy Scouts, a proud Eagle Scout, and then went in the U.S. Army and graduated a couple of times from UGA in Florida State. Um, and, and just good educational background for high school and college. And uh, just really, most of the kids here uh, came from middle class values, you know, and it was, uh, everybody had a value on learning, had placed emphasis, valuable uh, knowledge was was worth money. And that was, uh, and, and the social interaction, friends, and some of those friends I've still got to this day. Some of them are gone. I mean, they're, you know, they're dead, but uh, there are others that I've known since 
1942-1943, we all grew up in the same pocket of five points, essentially. And some of them are still there. Do you know of any shops or um, businesses that are still here? Like Jittery Joe's? Jittery Joe's used to be a, a service station. That uh, it seems like it was a Sinclair station, and they had a big billboard type thing that had a dinosaur on it, which became oil, you know. Um, Hodson's Pharmacy was, it is, it, the name has changed, but the pharmacy is old Watson's Pharmacy that was across the street over where Five Points Deli is. And Earth Fair, the grocery store, used to be a Bell's grocery store. And that was there. Um, we still have a Hodgson's Pharmacy today. Is it the same yes. one? Yes. Same one. And, um, it, so Five Points Deli was there? No, the Five Points Deli was not there then. <laughs> Hodgson's Pharmacy grew out of Watson's. And Watson's was where the Five Points Deli is now. Now, next door to the Five Points Deli is the Henrietta Apartments. And they have been there since before I was born. And they're still there. Now, we did have a really neat bakery uh, right there next to Henrietta Apartments. And we used to all have skates that you would put on the bottom of your shoes and we would all skate up and down on the sidewalk there. Was it a movie theater? We had, a movie th we had several movie theaters downtown. Didn't have anything out this way. We had the Georgia Theater, which is still there. Well, sort of there, isn't it? It burned a couple of, I guess, last year. Uh, we had the Palace Theater and we had the Ritz. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, the screen for the Ritz is still there, down near Tasty World, near the, near the UGA campus. But we had three movie theaters back in the 40s and 50s. And from a different interview, I gleaned that there was a connection between the bakery and one of the theaters. Uptown. Triple A Bakery moved from Five Points uptown, and it was close, not next door, but really close to the Georgia Theater. And boy, you could come out of the, like the theater, and you could smell those donuts. And early in the morning, you could smell bread cooking, baking, uh, from Benson's Bakery. Benson's. Benson's. Oh, wasn't there like some deal you turned in? Yeah, yeah. Now that didn't have anything to do with Barrow, but in those days, kids could get in the movie theater at the Palace free if you brought two Benson's bread wrappers, and then uh, if you bought brought uh, later a couple of canned foods for you know like the food bank. We didn't actually have a food bank back then, but somebody, probably the Salvation Army, distributed canned goods. And uh, if you brought two cans, you could get in and see a double feature, like a Western. And they would always have some goofy romantic story, too, like Doris Day and something, you know. But what but the guys like were old black and white Gene Autry, Joy, uh, Roy Rogers, Whip Wilson, Lash LaRue. You don't remember them. You can buy them today for a dollar on the on DVDs in the in the bins at Walgreens, you know. Is there anything else you would like to share with me about Barrow? Well, it was just a great educational experience, and I'm just happy to see there's hope for the future by talking to you two guys. And uh, I, I always thought Barrow, and everybody else did too, this is the best school in Georgia. Not just Athens, but Georgia. And uh, I don't know, it was just a real good experience.
real good learning experience. Did they still have the same kind of high grade? Did they, what were their grades like? The well, well known school? I think so. In Athens, everybody wanted their kids, if they could, to go to Barrow. We had other schools. We had, uh, now we also had black schools. We had black schools and white schools, and we had College Avenue and Chase Street uh, that were white schools uh, before integration. But it, this was always the, <coughs> the principal school to, that people wanted their kids to go to. Who was the principal at that time? Well, the first principal I had was Miss Flanagan, Jean, Jean Flanagan, and boy, she was rough. I'm sure she was a very nice person, but you'd see her coming. We'd be in line to go somewhere, like to lunch, and uh, boy, when she came by, that was, yeah, yeah, it was just like attention, you know. You were ready to salute any moment. And after her, <coughs> excuse me, was um, <coughs> Ms. Tarpley, who was a good principal also. Uh, 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 bo both of them were real disciplinarians. Back in those days, we didn't have male administrators like a principal and, and no male teachers. Everything was female. And it was... Um, uh, really, uh, most of them were very s strict disciplinarians, stern. Mm -hmm. They could wither you with a with a look. Did, did they have physical punishments, like a paddle? No, I, I don't recall anyone getting paddled until high school. high school. Now, in high school, you really got popped. But at Barrow, I honestly do not remember any kind of what we used to call corporal punishment. Uh, it was awful, but uh, even that was bad because you could get a whipping at home for bringing home a note from the teacher. Yeah. And, the, and the parents were, some, some parents were, you wish you got a whipping at school so you didn't get one at home. Or switching, which means a tree of a, a branch from a tree on your legs. <laughs> well, it's not a branch, but it's like a pretty limber, tough green shoot, about as big as your little finger. So everybody got switchings back then. They don't do that, I don't think, anymore. Thank you. That was well, thank you. It's been a pleasure. Thanks for the water.